Sister Anne, thank you very much uh, for coming to see us today. Thank you so much, Jazakallah, for having me here. How far have you traveled? I've traveled almost an hour to be here. Yeah, <laughs> alhamdulillah. Uh, where about? Where, which place? A small place uh, near Utrecht, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Mm. In the Netherlands, it's in the middle of the Netherlands. Yeah. Now, um, I would like to hear from you how your journey to Islam started. Well, consciously, I would say it started during my studies. I studied religious studies, which was about all the world views in the world. So we started with Hinduism, Buddhism. When was that? It was in 2006. Mm. Yeah. At university? At the University of Amsterdam, mm. uh, the Vue University. And um, I always had an interest in religions. And I also have read a lot about Islam, but not uh, in the sense that I was looking for a religion um, consciously. Um, and then during my studies, I noticed that I had this preference for Islam or that it, my interest for Islam grew more and more. And I think it was actually during the subject of Christianity. So the topic of Islam was still due for the next semester. And then during the topic of Christianity, I noticed that I probably was Muslim already. Although you were born as a Christian. I was born as a Christian, raised as a Christian, or born as a Muslim, of course, but raised <laughs> as a Christian. And my father is actually a Protestant preacher man. Oh. And um, yeah, I, I, uh, at a certain point in my life, I think around 14, 13, I made this decision that I do believe in God and I do believe in f destiny, faith, but I didn't want to put a label on it. So I didn't call myself a Christian out loud in that sense. And then what happened when you studied Christianity at university? Yeah. So before then, uh, I did believe in God, uh, but I didn't want to put a label on myself. But during the topic of Christianity, I kind of became very sure that I wasn't a Christian because of the, um, the dogmas of Christianity, the Trinity and um, the position of Jesus in Christianity. Yeah. Because that was not the way I've been raised. My father is, uh, I would say, an open-minded man who taught me that Jesus is actually um, human <laughs> and um, a very good example of people and more a kind of teacher. He didn't believe Jesus was the Son of God? Yes. He did? No. Oh, he uh, didn't. So he did not, yeah. So, oh, really? Yeah. And he was still a preacher? He, st he still, on this day, is a preacher man, yes. Yeah. Huh. Subhanallah. Is this a sort of a Unitarian uh, sect? No, it's actually the... Uh, or his uh, personal uh, choice. It's her personal choice, yeah. And you, you will find it a lot in the Netherlands, actually, that um, preacher men can have their kind of personal choice. They, they might be not that um, explicit about it, for mm. example, in church. But um, on a personal level, there's a lot of space to have your own preferences. Uh, but that was the way that I've been raised. Um, that was very contrary to what I've been uh, well taught in the scores of Christianity about the official dogmas. And these official dogmas, I, I couldn't accept them. Um, so that was, I think, the point that I decided that if, if I ever going to put myself in a box like of um, a label of, or something like that, it would be Islam, definitely. And then I started. Though, though you had not yet studied Islam, that well, was going to just by, by not officially, like oh. in university. But of course, I had my conversations with oh, you Muslim friends. Knew something about it. Oh. Um, I wrote already some papers uh, in high school, but that was not like a serious, deep study. Um, and then during, I started praying already then. And um, praying this the Islamic way. Praying the Islamic way. So I asked my friends, like, um, how should I do this? How should I do that? And I joined them in the, the five times prayer. That's it. Then you became a Muslim. Yes, I was already a Muslim, actually. And this is also what my friend said. Um, she said, oh, Anne, you're already a Muslim. And I was like, no, I don't want to put myself in a box. And uh, so I always make this joke that it was in the summer between my um, two years of study uh, that I said the Shahada, and that was actually more a confession to myself <laughs> than it was to Allah, because I was already doing this five times a day in prayer, because we say Shahada and prayer as well. Alhamdulillah. 
What was your uh, father's response? Yeah, my father's response was, I would say, Socratic, meaning he asked me, okay, why? <laughs> and why? And did you study this? And did you study that? And can you explain me why? And when he saw and understood that I had done my studies and I knew I was talking about what I was talking about, he was okay. And he accepted it immediately. Subhanallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Mm. He just wanted to be very sure that it was my own decision. Yeah. Any members of the family who uh, probably didn't like your decision or it was okay for, for, mm, for them? I think in general it was, it was okay. I, alhamdulillah, I didn't have any big big issues but of course some people they don't like changes in general mm. and then becoming a muslim especially in the times we're living in it was just not that that long after 9 11 so yeah then they have this fear um for maybe how other people will react um, so they just want you to be safe for example so they have some fears but it was not really that um they didn't accept my decision yeah alhamdulillah so to sum up one might say that it was the monotheism of islam that you found uh, yourself comfortable with absolutely so if if you would say what what was it it absolutely tell hate mm. and um, the the idea that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close but not in an anthropomorphic way so that's the the idea that attracted me the most yeah. You don't need a mediator to reach him. No mediators. Mm. Um, and it's a very spiritual way in which you can connect directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can um, make a connection, but without the... Um, without describing him. Oh, and that's a, we, we don't need words no, and that's sure. something uh, I feel really deeply you can try to get to know him we can get to know him to the, the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his names uh, in that sense he can be very close but for the rest we don't need to imagine him mm. it's not even possible and that is for me a kind of relief I don't need to think about that I can just uh, make my own connection directly with him well, it would seem to me from your uh, story that this was really a smooth process. It was a process, yes. Yeah. So there was not this this <laughs> this thunder and air, lightning from <laughs> the clouds. It was, I would say, it was a time span of a year that I was seriously studying it, and then at this moment, um, I knew a bit of a Surah Ar Rahman. I was walking uh, uh, in the streets, having actually two bags of groceries in my hands, <laughs> um, having my halal meat. Um, and then I was like, Anne, you're doing all these Muslim things and you're eating halal now. I just started living on my own, doing my own groceries. And then I saw this, um, it was summer. So yeah, we have this nice smell during summer. And I saw this uh, tree uh, bowing uh, by the wind. And then I remembered Surah Ar Rahman. So it was making sajda. And that was really the moment that it was like, yes, there is a creator. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that's what I believe. And I do believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a, in fact a prophet. And that's what makes you Muslim. And yes, there might be other things I don't know yet, or you know, I need to find things out, which is fine. But that was the moment that I actually surrendered and accepted Islam. Completely. Yeah. You know what surprises me in your case is that you started living Islam before you embraced it. Yeah. So I think I was still a bit of uh, hesitant to, um, yeah, actually the, the idea to put yourself in a box uh, was something I resisted for a long time. I mean, to the extent of buying halal meat. To the extent of buying halal meat, because I all found it so logical. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the, and that is also funny, but that's just in hindsight, of course, is that the process until then was very logical. It needed to make sense in my head. It needed to be um, rational. But that point of, for me, taking Shahada was just pure experience. It was seeing the creation and knowing there must be a, cre a creator, but then feeling it, seeing it, experiencing it, 
that was the moment really that um, I think the uh, the feeling of Iman really touched me. Yeah. Did it impact on your life generally? Um, such a transformation in society. I mean, I don't know. Well, what do you do? I mean, in, in, in terms of work, uh, in terms of your acquaintances, your friends, your colleagues? Yeah. I think, um, as we said, it was not that much of a revolution. It was more an evolution. So in the process, I involved a lot of my friends. So I talked with them. Um, they we always eat together, so they noticed my transformation of not eating pork, it. not yeah, eating hella, eating vegetarian. So they they expected it. So there was not a surprise for anyone there. Uh, so that made also the the process very smooth. And then after my first year, I uh, also studied Islamic studies, Islamic theology, and so yeah. Now in my work, I'm an Islamic theologian, so it's no problem for me to be Muslim, <laughs> alhamdulillah. Um, so I'm a researcher and um, a consultant and mentor, so I can um, yeah, live the, the faith in different ways, alhamdulillah. And how is your relationship with your family at the moment? Are you on good terms? We are on good terms, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so we live close by. We see each other almost every day. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Now, what about the Muslim community in the Netherlands? Uh, was it of help? Um, I think in that time, the things that um, the Muslim community in the Netherlands is very diverse. Um, it's not monolithic. Mm. Uh, so in some countries, for example, everyone is Hanafi, Matridi, or everyone in Malaysia is Shafi. And the Netherlands is super diverse. And if you want to study Islam in a more deeper level, um, back in those days, there was not a lot of um, information outside of university. Mm. That was of like a, a level of, yeah, where you could, could go more deep, I would say. And... Um, I think some Muslim communities in the Netherlands are quite harsh. Uh, so are, they are focusing on how it should be. Uh, there's halal, haram, and no gray zones. Um, and I would say a lack of historical understanding of the differences in Islam. And I think if we want to become one ummah, it's very important to not focus on all becoming the same, but on seeing where differences are coming from, understanding the differences, and respecting those differences. And if we can respect each other's differences, then we are really able to become one ummah. Because then we don't want to fight each other. Yeah. And so that has been my focus since. And I see this now more and more in the Netherlands, alhamdulillah. But um, it's just something of the last few years. And this is also one of the reasons that um, with a few, we started Fahim Institute. It's a Dutch institute for more understanding, more fahm of Islam. You set it up yourself? Yeah. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Where is it based? We are national, so we don't have our own... Um, so it's online? It's online, and but we also have some befriended organizations like Sense of the Middenweg. Uh, we give our courses here um, and online, and we organize retreats. So then we just hire awesome. a place. And inshallah, we hope in the future that we can have our own place, like a fahm home the house of Muslims in Europe, a home in nature, uh, where we can also have our retreats, a big library, and a way where you can study Islam from a non-prescriptive way, um, so that you are offered some insights, but that you can experience it in a way that is true uh, to your own feeling, where you get nourished by you know, the information you get. Now, in FAM Institute, do you target Muslims in particular, or is it open to anybody who is interested? So how we work is that the topic is central. And if you are interested in that topic, you are welcome. So it's very interesting. Whether Muslim or non-Muslim. Muslim, non-Muslim, non -Muslim, male, female, young, old. Sometimes we have courses when the youngest is 24 and the oldest is 18. And um, Muslim, non-Muslim. So it depends on the topic. Uh, but then you will find even the, the attendees are so super, super different. And you see them in one room and you think, huh, how do these people get together? But because you all have the same interests, there is this union mm. um, and connection. SubhanAllah. How does this work? I mean, do, they, do, do people 
subscribe? Do they pay yeah. subscription? So or? we have free lectures every month. Mm -hmm. uh, some are in Dutch, some are in English. But then we also have the courses, which are like three, four, five, six times or the weekend retreats or weekend course. And those are, you have to buy a ticket for it. And with that money, uh, we are able to be self-sustainable. So we never had any subsidies. We never had any big uh, funding. Uh, so we are completely independent and everyone who works at Family Institute does it voluntarily. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Uh, this uh, such a brilliant idea is worth expanding even beyond the, the Netherlands. Yeah, that's why we, we hope to set up one day this fam home, um, especially because in some European countries, Muslims are prevented from organizing retreats. Uh, due to government issues. Mm. Um, so the Netherlands is quite central and easy to travel to. So that's why we want to have a big retreat place for others also to be able to hire and to offer this kind of safe space, a safe haven to just be Muslim for everyone and create also more English content, inshallah. Are you uh, connecting with uh, other Muslim communities elsewhere in Europe? Um, yes, alhamdulillah, we sometimes, uh, I also speak in other countries, um, sometimes go to the UK, uh, but only like if I'm invited, I go. Mm. Um, um, but I think we can be more connected and work harder to, to raise such an initiative together. Yeah. Because the idea of, uh, of uh, this institute is, is really a brilliant one. I mean, uh, I don't think we have something similar in uh, in other muslim countries i haven't come across something like that it, uh, uh, where people can come to uh, increase their understanding and awareness uh, of the yeah. deen whether they are part of it or they are just intrigued about yeah. it subhanallah we, for example we had this course called mindful muslim how to become a mindful muslim and then we also have non-muslim attendees which i found interesting because it's about how to become a mindful Muslim, uh, but still they find something uh, that, you know, it calls them. And maybe you don't know what happens after, but maybe it will be, how do you say, a s small stone in their water and then most the rings probably, will grow. Yeah, most probably the, the, there is something within them that tells them there's something here. Yeah. Well, let's find out what it is. Yes. With many people, it begins this way. It's just oh, yeah. um, intrigued about something, uh, curious. Yeah. And that's why I think these open spaces are so important uh, to be inclusive, to be inclusive to uh, whether it be different Muslims, whether it be non-Muslims, um, to have this place where you feel welcomed just as you are. You're welcome as you are. You don't need to, to change anything. You're just welcome as you are. And to feel that um, inclusiveness for many people, that is the moment when they become even more curious. But if you set some boundaries, like, oh, you first need to do this, or you're doing it the incorrect way, um, you push them actually away. So also in the part of Dawa, I'm more interested in how we can keep people in Islam. <laughs> mm. than bring new people to Islam because I think in general we Muslims we feel keeping Muslims in Islam these days it's the bigger challenge it's the bigger challenge <laughs> <laughs> so that's the one I take <laughs> especially <laughs> among the young generation I mean, the challenge is enormous yeah uh, when it comes for example to the status of women uh, how we deal with contemporary issues contemporary technology there are so many new issues uh, and we need to address them in a holistic way. Yes, based on the Islamic tradition. Yes, based on the new information and bring it together to be able to bridge that gap. Yeah. Sister Anne, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.